says Mr. Fox can show us how to make some money. I've told him he had to show us something if he's going to get. I don't want no men. You know what he's doing, all right. He ain't smarter than I am, though. I know fishy work the same as he do. Mm-hmm. He's the expert myself, you know. I got so much work to do that I ain't got no time to do that fishy work. He claims, though, that uh, you've been keeping Aunt right. There's too deep for him, Amos, too deep. He can't figure them books out. Well, he claims that he knows bookkeeping. You see, Amos, I ain't told nobody else this, but the way I've been keeping the books, you see, I've been keeping them old and keeping them so that they can't nobody else figure them out but me. Mm-hmm. That's why he can't figure it. He claims, though, that you got a lot of figures in the book there that don't mean nothing. He don't know nothing about that. Another thing about that man, too. He don't want to make too many changes around here. Oh, I as the head man, I as the president. And there ain't no expert going to come in here and try to tell me nothing. Yeah, well, one of the first things he say he's going to do uh, is get a typewriter, you see. Where are you going to get it from? He ain't no typewriter. He said the president of the company, though, ought to have a stenographer, too. Oh, I agree with him there, all right. Yes, sir. I ought to have myself a stenographer. He ain't no stenographer. I ought to have a stenographer, though, Amos, because when we put on this big drive... Oh, I agree with you. But the only thing is, though, uh, you know uh, we, we got to hold down... Coming up the street, look. Who is that? Who is that? Well, here comes Sylvester. Well, I've been doggone. I ain't seen him for a long time, is you? No, I ain't seen him, no. Hello there, Sylvester. Hello there, Sylvester. How Hello, are you, Miss there? Amos. How Hello, Miss Andy. How's you gentlemen getting along? Oh, well, we're... Are we going... doing good? How's everything with you? I'm getting along all right, Miss Amos. Oh, is you still over at Mr. Taylor's garage? Yeah, see, yeah. Uh, Miss Taylor to me, too. That's good. I just got uh, another raise last week. He told me uh, as soon as I was a little older that he was going to make me the assistant manager of the garage. Well, well. That sounds good. Uh, Miss Taylor think a whole lot of you, Sylvester. Uh, how is Miss Ruby Taylor getting on? Oh, she's just sweet as ever. I guess you done heard about me giving a engagement ring for Christmas. I give a engagement ring for Christmas, you know. Yeah, Amos done give a engagement ring for a Christmas present, Sylvester. Uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. I know about that. He said is a sweet girl, all right. I, I see, uh, see her now and then when she uh, brings the car in the garage. Oh, well, that's the way it goes, Sylvester. I heard about you and Miss Parker having the trouble, Miss Andy. Oh, yeah, well, that's all over now. That's all oh, over. Oh, yeah, and, and Andy come pretty near getting in a mess, but that's all over now. Yeah, that gal, she sued me for breach of promise, but... I got out of it all right, yeah. Uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. I, I was talking to your landlord down where you live, you know. Uh-huh. And uh, he was telling me that you told him how you won the kids, how you jumped up in court and made that long talk in front of the jury. Uh, well, uh... What long well, talk are you talking about? Well, uh, how is everything, Silver? Wait a minute, sir. What long talk are you talking about? What's the use of talking about that now, Amos? Look, look, wait a minute. Look at that crowd down the street there. I wonder who that is. I wonder what that is there. That's all right about that crowd down the street. That ain't nothing. Go ahead, Sylvester. What you talking about? Uh, you see, I was down to the grocery store, and I happened to run into the landlord, and uh, she started talking about the breach of promise kid, and your landlord told me, Miss Andy, that you told him that you stood up in front of the judge and made a long speech and got all the lawyers mixed up and everything and won the kids by yourself. I ain't told him none of that stuff. That's wrong. Is you been going around talking like that, Andy? No, no. I ain't told nobody nothing like that. You was in court scared to death. You didn't even know what to do. Then you go around and tell somebody that you jumped up and made a long speech. Oh, no, no. I ain't said nothing like that. He's mixed up on it. Well, uh, I saw I said anything about it, but that's what he told me, Miss Andy. You said he has got a lot of nerve talking like that, Andy. Oh, that is wrong. Mm. Yeah. Well, Sylvester, we got to get on down to the office here. Yeah, Sylvester, we got to get down to work. Uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. I got to get to work myself. Well, I'm glad I saw you, gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, come over to the room some night, Sylvester. Uh, all right, sir. I'll come over to see you some night. Yeah, so long, Sylvester. Uh, so long. So long, Sylvester. So long, gentlemen. I'll see you later.
And uh, what did you do in telling the landlord that you jumped in up in court there and made that long speech? Oh, that's wrong, Amos. You know I ain't told nobody nothing like that. Boy, if it wasn't for you, I don't know what I'd done. I don't see how you can tell anybody stuff like that, though, Andy. You ain't got no business talking like that. Oh, no, that's wrong. I told the landlord that I just stood up and answered the questions. That's all I told him. I go talk to the landlord when I see him. What's the use of starting an argument with the landlord now? We owe him money now. What's the use of making him mad? I ain't going to make him mad. I just going to have a little talk with him. That's all I going to do. I told the landlord that I started to get up and make a speech, but I changed my mind. I, I just told him that I started to make a speech. Now, maybe he's all mixed up on it. Yeah, maybe he is mixed up. Well, here we is at the office. I guess Mr. Fox is in there, ain't he? Yeah, I bet he's in there, expert and round. He don't want to mess with me, though, because I got brains, too. The first thing he got to figure out is where he's going to get his salary from. He wants $50 a week. If he can figure that out, he's doing some. Well, come on, let's get on in here. Yeah, there he is in there, see? Yeah, figuring out everything. Open the door. Hello there, Mr. Fox. Hello, gentlemen, hello. Hello, Mr. Fox. How is everything getting along here? Well, I've just been making a resume of the conditions. Mm-mm, you don't mean to tell us. Yes. By the way, I suppose you gentlemen have been to lunch. Uh, yes, sir. We were down in the lunchroom getting something to eat. That's where I met Andy. Mr. Brown, I suppose you realize that you've taken two hours and a half for lunch. Of course, that is all right, but it seems to me that a businessman would limit himself to one hour for lunch. Well, I tell you, my feet started hurting me, so I went over to the house and took off my shoes a little while. Sit down and rest up my feet. Then, Brown, I would suggest that you get different shoes, which will eliminate that waste of time in the future. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, get your feet fixed up so you, so you won't have to go home and take off your shoes. Brown, I've been looking over these books, and I can't make heads or tails out of them. One day you show your income, and the next day you don't. Well, uh, sometime I lose my pencil, you see, so I just let it go. Now, gentlemen, what is the mechanical condition of the taxi cab at the present time? What is what? What condition is the taxi cab in? Well, uh, it froze up right now. Uh, it froze up, and it's standing still, and we can't even move it. Well, gentlemen, how do you expect to make any money with the cab standing still and frozen up? That's what they want you to figure out. But you can't expect me to come in here and figure out how we're going to get money.